showed up today to celebrate in this beautiful moment. I hope today that you can sense the excitement as these two people come together, and I hope you are enriched by what God has done in their lives. The, today will be a day full of all the great feelings that you would expect at a wedding. Uh, the joy, the excitement, the eagerness to be married, yet the desire to stay in the moment. So that yeah, we can be slow enough and take it one moment at a time. Yet something else will happen today that I hope we all can experience more than anything else. I hope that today you can sense the love that is shown here as it is a small taste of the kind of love that God has for each and every one of us. So to those of us gathered here today, friends, family, and especially Moses and Victoria, in the excitement of this moment, I would hope that we all take moments to listen and hear God's still small voice and be aware of his presence during your special day. So who gives this woman to be married to this man? We do. You may be seated. Moses and Victoria, you are here today before your friends, your family, your loved ones, not only for your love of each other, but also for your love of Christ and the fact that he brought you two together. Moses and Victoria, the responsibility of marriage is a beautiful union that is to last a lifetime. And this is a union that is based on the love that you share for one another. So I want to talk to us all about that love for a moment. At the beginning of your, or your relationship, you became friends. Then that connection went deeper into dating. Then as you fell in love, it moved to engagement. And now in love, you are standing here, married. And this is the joy of falling in love. And this is what 1 Corinthians 13 says about love. It says that love is patient, that it is kind. That it does not envy and it does not boast, and it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, and it is not self-seeking, and it is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But I want you to note something about this verse. Marriage goes far beyond simply falling in love. As we look at what the Bible says about love, we see the nature of what love tangibly consists of. It's not something that you can necessarily fall into. This must be a choice. So Moses and Victoria, in the good moments and in the bad, in the sickness and the health, in all the things to come, choose to be patient, choose to be kind, choose to be generous, to be humble, to honor your spouse, to seek your spouse first, to be gentle, to be forgiving, to be honest, to protect, to build trust, to dream and hope together, because this will keep your endurance. This is the key to your love going the distance, as love is not only based on how you feel in a moment, but it is a choice and a commitment that you both stand here and agree to for a lifetime between man and woman. Both have a responsibility to one another. 
In Ephesians 5, it gives us this encouragement. And I'm going to read it from the message, so it hopefully is new to you. <laughs> it says this, Wives, Victoria, understand and support your husband in ways that show your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, Wives should likewise submit to their husbands. And husbands, Moses, go all out in your love for your wife. Exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving and not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring out the best of her. Dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness, and that is how a husband ought to love your wife. You see, this is a mutual love. It isn't about the husband or the wife being in charge or in control, but instead it is about loving each other with no reservations, giving everything to each other as we see in the example used by Christ in the church. And here's the beauty of marriage as seen from God's perspective. Marriage allows you to reveal the real you within the safety and protection of unconditional commitment. And what makes a Christian wedding is not if a pastor does it or if you're in a church building, but what makes a Christian wedding is whether, even though those are good things, <laughs> what makes a Christian marriage is whether both people have entered a genuine relationship with God and continue to help each other grow in that relationship. And this is the case for both of you. You both know Jesus personally. And now the covenant relationship that you are entering into is not only a covenant that you're making with each other, but also with Jesus. So lastly, Ephesians 4 verse 2 to 3 gives all of us a call. And this includes in our marriages. It says to be completely humble and gentle, to be patient, bearing with one another in love, and making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So those of us that are married here today, we know that it's not always going to be perfect or easy, and there's going to be times of disagreements. But what this passage talks about is through life's biggest challenges, through the ups and downs, let your love and commitment to each other be founded and rooted in Christ. And as we pray for Moses and Victoria, we as believers understand that we, we lay hands on people. But we're not going to get you to come up and lay hands on them. So if you want to feel free to just reach out your hand towards them as we pray for them. So Jesus, we pray for Moses and Victoria. God, I pray for their marriage. Give them fruit. Give them an amazing marriage together. Give them added understanding of each other. Let their love go beyond words, but fall into actions. And God, we pray a blessing over each of them as they embark on this new journey together. In Jesus' name, amen. And Moses and Victoria wanted us to have worship be a really central part of their wedding. So we have music sheets in front of you. So we want to encourage you to sing.